Konnichiwa. Today, we're going to talk about a word that has a whole long list of definitions in the dictionary, many of which seem to have nothing to do with each other. I won't even go into this list. We'll just tackle the word and what it really means and see how it comes to have so many other extended meanings. The word is uchi, and it's one of the words you learn early on in Japanese. Probably the first context in which you learn it is that it is an alternative way of pronouncing this kanji. It can be ia, but it can also be uchi, and both of them mean house. This is the only way we can use this kanji. The other uchi is this one, and I don't think we should really regard them as different words, because it's a native Japanese word that had the Chinese kanji imposed at a later date, and, as is often the case, the kanji helps a little bit to differentiate exactly what we mean, but only a little bit here. So when uchi means house, the difference between ia and uchi is that ia refers to the physical building, the actual house. Uchi refers to what you might call the spiritual interior of the house, the family, the life that takes place in the house. To a small extent, we can say that it's somewhat similar to the difference in English between the words house and home. If we say that we are visiting someone's house, we usually say uchi because it is house in the sense of their family, their home. That's what we're visiting. We're not visiting the physical building. And just as a little side note, you might sometimes encounter expressions like sakuranchi. This is a very common abbreviation for sakura no uchi. So this really actually gives us the basis for all the other meanings of uchi, whichever kanji it's written with. This notion of a spiritual interior and enclosure defined, as it were, by its contents. Now, the next time you encounter uchi may well be when you encounter in anime or something a girl who's using kansai ben, and typically she will say uchi instead of watashi. So uchi can mean me, particularly feminine, particularly kansai dialect, although it's not restricted to that. And this is very interesting because it's rather similar to when kochira is used to mean me. Again, what kochira means is this side, the side that includes me. And this really has to be understood in the light of the fact that the distinction between the individual and the family or group to which an individual belongs is much less marked in Japanese than in Western culture, and in the past was even less marked than it is now. When Japanese people talk about, say, my little sister, generally speaking, they wouldn't say boku no imoto or watashi no imoto. They would tend to say uchi no imoto, the little sister of our house, the little sister of our family, the little sister of our group. And even uchi no kyo, which is the religion of our house, our family, our group, because religion is still to a large extent regarded in Japanese as something inherited, something part of one's family group, rather than an individual decision or commitment. Now from this, we get a very fundamental distinction in Japanese, which is between the concepts of uchi and soto. Uchi refers to the group one belongs to, the in-group. Soto refers to everything outside that group. And this has wide-ranging implications for Japanese culture and also for the Japanese language. For example, words like kuraru and ageru, which are generally explained to mean giving something up from oneself or receiving something down to oneself, is not strictly limited to the self. It's actually referring to the uchi, which could be oneself, but could also be the group to which one belongs. So when we talk about someone kuraruing to one's sister, or one's friend, this is because we regard the sister or the friend as part of our uchi, therefore it's giving down to us. And you'll sometimes see kureru used even where there is no strict connection between the speaker and the person receiving, but 
if the speaker is identifying with that person, regarding them at this point at least as more uji than soto, then kureru is appropriate. So we can see that this whole concept of uji soto, which has wide-ranging cultural implications, which I won't go into, also has implications for the grammatical structures we use. Now, developing from this, uji can be used to define a group of which anything is a part. So we can say, oku no uji kara erabu, which means choose from a large number, or strictly speaking, choose from a group consisting of a large number. So uji here refers to the group from which one's choosing. And it can become a little more abstract than that. It can be referring to an uchi of time, an enclosure of time. And again, an enclosure defined by its contents. So we might say, Atatakai uchi ni taberu, which means, eat it while it's warm, eat it while it's hot, as we say in English. Atatakai uchi is that uchi, that enclosure, that period, during which the food is warm. So it's an enclosure defined by its contents, like the other kinds of uji. When does the uji end? It ends when the food stops being warm. Similarly, wakai uji, while one is young. One should do this, do that, while one is young. The uji, the enclosure of time, is defined by its contents. While one is young, one is in the wakai uji. When one ceases to be young, that's where the limits of the enclosure lie. And this can extend to usages that can be a little confusing at first. So, for example, ima no uchi, which is a phrase you'll often hear in anime and such. For example, when an enemy is disabled and now is the time to do the magical purification, somebody might shout, ima no uchi. And what that means is, literally, in the house of now in the enclosure of now. It doesn't necessarily mean this absolute instant, but it does mean while now continues. What does now mean in this case? Well, now means the situation as it is at present in this case, while the villain is still purifiable, while he's disabled, while we can actually do what we need to do. It could mean while we're still able to run away. It could mean while the great door still hasn't closed. In other words, ima no uchi is while the circumstances that prevail at the moment continue to prevail. Once they cease to prevail, it will no longer be ima no uchi. And another one that can seem confusing is sono uchi. Now, sono uchi is translated as meaning, and does mean, sooner or later, and sometime in the future. It will eventually happen by and by. So why does sono uchi mean that? To understand this, we not only have to understand uchi, but we have to understand a little bit more about sono. Now, I've made a video in which I explain various things about the use of sono in Japanese. It very often replaces what in English would be pronouns. So if we say sakura to sono inu, we're not saying sakura and that dog. We're saying Sakura and her dogs. Sono often implies something related to what we're talking about. And it's one of the strategies that's used in view of the fact that Japanese doesn't use pronouns all that often. A somewhat more abstract usage is, for example, in a dictionary definition like Tachiao, which means be in a place as a witness. And a Japanese definition is Shonen Toshite. Sono bani teru, which means, as a witness, appear in that place, come out in that place. But what does that place mean in this situation? What is sono actually being used to mean? It means simply whatever place it is, the place appropriate to the current situation. And this is the kind of sono that's being used in sono uchi. Sono uchi means during the enclosure of time that is appropriate to whatever we're talking about. It will happen. Sono uchi means it will happen within a period of time that's reasonable for it to happen in. Which may seem a little vague, but it's no vaguer than the equivalent English expressions like one of these days 
sooner or later, before long. It's a little bit more specific in that it does tend to imply a time that's not too late for it to be of any use. So this is really how Uchi extends its meaning from quite specific ones to more and more abstract ones, all of which are closely related to the fundamental meaning. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below and I will answer as usual. I'd like to thank my gold Kokeshi patrons, my producer angels who make these videos possible, and all my producer angels, my patrons and supporters on Patreon and everywhere. Thank you all so much for making this adventure into Japanese possible, helping us to look at Japanese words and expressions rather the way we did today, not just in the light of long lists of dictionary definitions, but in the light of their real, fundamental, underlying meaning, their cultural significance, as well as their literal translations into foreign languages like English. Looking at Japanese as Japanese is in many ways the core of what we're doing here. And I'd like to thank you for attending this lesson. Kore kara mo yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Class dismissed.